Hey guys, I'm Ted, here to give you another fast fact, and for today's fast fact, we are going to discuss the election of 1860. Now, the election of 1860 was a momentous uh, year. It was a very momentous election. Um, for one, uh, all of the preceding uh, presidential nominees from, really from uh, Van Buren and... Uh, Van, from 1840, from Van Buren and uh, Tyler, they had all been sort of uh, the same. You know, you really there really wasn't uh, much difference, much differentiation between them. But in 1860, there were stark con uh, contrasts in the choices um, for for who you were going to vote uh, vote for, and each uh, and your choice, your vote really mattered. It was very important for the future of the republic. Uh, for example, a vote for Lincoln meant no slavery in the territories and a new domestic um a do a new domestic economic uh emphasis a vote for breckenridge meant that the that there would be an unabated expansion of slavery into the territories with guarantees of protection to slave owners for uh, in, in regard to their slave property uh if that slave if the slave owner decided to take his slave property into free states um a vote for a vote for Bell meant that there would be no real changes in the Republic, and a vote for a vote for Douglas meant that the guiding principle in the territories would change. So there was a lot up on the table domestically uh, for the United States. Now the election was really two separate contests: Lincoln and Douglas competing in the, in the free states, and Bell and Breckinridge competing in the slave states. Uh, an interesting point to note uh, that I would found that I would find interesting was that Lincoln was not on a ballot in the majority of the slave states. Um, he, as a matter of fact, Lincoln would go on to receive no votes in ten slave states. Now, <clears throat> now uh, many people leading up to the election uh, attempted to taint the election against Lincoln, and many uh, other leading figures in the slave states came out and openly said that. A vote for Lincoln would be disaster for the Union. It would be akin to a national disaster and could lead to the disunion of the uh, of the Republic. Now, now of all of the 1860 candidates, only one really uh, took the campaign seriously, or camp, or or uh, even put a. Um, or even put bigger into his campaign to campaign nationally, and that was Stephen Douglas. Stephen, uh, Stephen Douglas, the current sitting uh, senator from Illinois, uh, and now presidential nominee of the Northern Wing of the Democratic Party, was com he was the only one to campaign nationally. Douglas did so, but doing so was very foolhardy on his part. Uh, he was at great personal risk in the slave state, and he was the subject of open violence when he made appearances in the slave states. This is, of course, um, a response to his position of popular sovereignty being the guiding principle for the territories. Now, the election results were reflective of the sectional breakdown that was commonplace by now in the Republic. Lincoln um, really took Douglas to task and carried nearly all of the free states, with the exception of New Jersey, which he split with Douglas. Douglas, for his part, carried New three of New Jersey's electoral college votes and all of Missouri's votes. John Bell won in Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky, and Breckinridge swept the remaining slave states. Now, the results, as I stated earlier, were indicative of how deeply the nation was divided in 1860. In the electoral college, Lincoln won easily with 180 votes. Breckinridge took 72 Bell 39 and Douglas only won nine, or only won 12. He took Missouri nine and the three he got in New Jersey. Now, if all of Abraham Lincoln's opponents in the 1860 election had pooled their votes, Lincoln still would have won. Uh, Lincoln, uh, Lincoln's opponents, if they had pooled their electoral votes, he still would have won easily. Uh, Lincoln's sweeping of the populist free states of the Northeast states, the Mid-Atlantic states, and the Great Lakes states, his sweeping of those states put him over the edge. Uh, it really, uh, the moment that he took um, those popular states, it put him over the edge and it made uh, his, um, his win a certainty. Uh, now, in the popular vote, 
Lincoln only garnered 40%. He garnered 40% of the popular vote. Douglas was right on his heel. Douglas garnered 30% of the popular vote. And Breckenridge and Bell split the remaining balance, the, the remaining difference. Now, Lincoln won the election with a minority of votes. He won without a single vote in 10 slave states. Lincoln would have won regardless. His 40% of the popular vote um, was only weighted in the free states. Um, it was only weighted in the free states. Uh, it was He had very weak support in the uh, slave states. As a matter of fact, only five slave states. He only, he only got votes in five of the slave states. Uh, Uh, now, where where Lincoln's uh, strength did lie was in those um, those lower tier uh, free states, Indiana, Illinois, um, Ohio, and so forth, uh, and the Northeast, um, the New England states, Massachusetts, Vermont, Connecticut, Maine, and so forth. Um, also in Oregon, he had strength in Oregon and also in Iowa. Uh, Lincoln's performance in those states um, really, really just set the tone for it. He won those states with uh, a clear majority, with over 50% of the vote. Um, Douglas trailed in those states. The only states that, that Lincoln won in which he didn't have a clear majority were California, Oregon, and New Jersey. Um, and all in all the other northern states, Lincoln outpolled his opponents, and he outpolled them combined. So even if so even if Lincoln had uh, lost Oregon, California, and New Jersey, he still would have carried the other free states. So he still would have won all their electoral votes. And the electoral votes for California, Oregon, and New Jersey in 19... Uh, my apologies, in 1860 would not have made a major difference. He still would have won a clear-cut majority. And the only person who could have won in those three states were Stephen Douglas. Stephen Douglas was the only person who could have won in those three states. Uh, if its opponents had pulled together their votes, they would only would have garnered about a million more votes. And they still would have lost in the Electoral College. Um, decided, the, the, uh, the decisively, they would have lost in the Electoral College. Uh... As a matter of fact, if um, if Lincoln uh, had lost those states, if they had pulled their votes, they only would have carried three other states. They would have carried uh, or California, Oregon, New Jersey, and, and New, uh, New Jersey. Um, and there you guys have it. That is the uh, my fast fact, my little summary on the election breakdown of the election of, of 1860. Uh, but but, but uh, before we go, let me just give you the sums and the figures uh, of the of the election. So Lincoln was just shy of 1.9 million votes in that election. Douglas uh, had garnered 1.35 million votes. Breckenridge had had, uh, had managed to snag 675,000 votes and Bell won 600,000 votes. Um, had I said, had I said it earlier, Lincoln's support came from the uh, staunchly anti-slavery sections of the free states and the upper border states namely Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, in addition to Iowa. Um, Lincoln had over had uh, a 60-plus majority in a number of those states, and in the rest of the northern states and free states, he managed to snag a 50-plus majority of the votes. And that, of course, is, include, uh, that is uh, excluding California, Oregon, and New Jersey. In all the rest of the states, Lincoln was Lincoln outpolled them either 60, with either 60% of the vote or 50-plus percent of the vote um and then you guys have it that is my uh my fast fact it's not so fast fact i think we ran into like nine minutes but uh there you guys have it i hope you found it interesting and enjoyable uh please hit like subscribe and comment let me know what you thought about this fast fact and i will see you guys next time for another fast fact